Good evening and thank you for joining me tonight. If you've been on this channel for a while, you may know that I'm passionate about costumes and historical fashion and I wanted to share a bit of this passion with you. So in tonight's video, I will talk about the costumes I've used in my workplace just like I do with props from time to time and how I came to choose this or this dress and I will show you a few of my favorites as well and before we begin I just wanted to say that I am not a seamstress I do not make the costumes myself just designing or altering some parts sometimes and I am not an expert when it comes to historical accuracy so if it's something you're interested in I will leave a few links in the description box with great YouTube channels about historical fashion and yes all my costumes are not here. I already sold a few of them because I knew I wouldn't use them again or just because my wardrobe is not expandable. So let's dive in. I start to work on an idea, I've usually already chosen the era or fantasy world in which my video will take place. So I'm looking for inspiration in movies of course, series, paintings. As an example, the dress in the latest role play, a French courts game, was greatly inspired by one of the dresses worn by Kirsten Dunst in the Marie Antoinette movie from 2006 and sometimes I will also have a look at my favorite historical fashion book This is where I found inspiration for the Royal Gone Wallplay. These are gowns that inspired me for the final dress design. And once I have a clearer idea, what I usually do is one or two quick sketches of the costume I would like, so I know what I will be looking for. Here I have a few examples. These are quite old. I drew these sketches for the very first optometrist or play with the steampunk lady and I was planning to wear a belt or a corset but I finally chose to keep it simple
here is a much more recent one. I drew this for the apothecary in the woods and that was clearly inspired by the Outlander series and Claire's costumes. So I bought different pieces from different shops on Etsy. I'm going to show you. So first there is the bodice made of a dark blue linen Very comfortable And this is the stomacher that you place at the center before lacing the bodies. Then there is the skirt. Made of wool. So quite heavy and it was not always easy to walk in the forest with it. Still it's very comfortable as well. And for the show I search for pictures of Claire wearing a red shawl I really really like and my mother knitted it for me so it is a one of a kind Do we have I like this sketch. This was for the one seller and how I imagined her and the final result was quite close to this we will have a closer look at the costume in a moment we can see this kind of shawl here that I eventually skipped because it was too much in my opinion Here is another old one. This one was for the Christmas Carol roleplay. Quite plain. I bought a very simple green velvet dress and added a faux fur collar to be as close as possible to Dickens' descriptions. This 
these were for the very first apothecary work. This one was for the Royal Cone World Play. This is a dress I haven't really worn except for a few seconds, and this allowed me to discover that I'm not comfortable at all in a corset. <laughs> so I will try to avoid them in the future and I will probably sell this dress. it was a quite beautiful work. I mean the dress, not my sketch. And that's it for the sketches. I also wanted to talk a bit about fabrics. As I said, my costumes are not always historically accurate, but when I can, I try to choose fabrics that would give this authentic feeling. And my absolute favorite is linen. I love everything about linen. Its look, the texture, the hang, the softness on the skin, and it's one of the most sustainable fabric. So for me, the best one. Here is a quite thick one. And this one is much thinner. But when I need a costume that would be for an aristocratic character like the Lady of the Manor or Madame Dumais, I will look for shiny and rustling fabrics. Most of the time, in these cases, what I try to find is a high quality synthetic fabric that imitate the look of historical fabrics, like this one, imitating silk. Silk. And this is very beautiful with all these fake imperfections. And since it's a good quality fabric, even if not natural, it can last a very long time and be worn again and again. And it's much more affordable than real silk. Same for Madame Dumais dress. Here is a sample of the fabric. I bought it in a fabric store and sent it to the seamstress. 
it's not as beautiful as the previous one but it has some kind of purple reflections I'm not sure you can see them some leftover ruffles made by the seamstress for the front of the gown such a nice detail one rich natural fabric that I really like and that is cotton velvet it's quite thick but very soft slightly shiny and can be fit for a casual look as well as a rich look depending on the costume style it's very versatile and so beautiful but since it's quite thick it's not always easy to walk with I'm going to show you three of my favorite costumes beginning with one involving cotton velvet so this costume is made up of different pieces the jacket was made by Birgit a costume designer and seamstress from Germany using a dark burgundy velvet fabric on the front and at the back a dark pink linen you can adjust it And she very kindly added these beautiful golden embroideries to remind of the feathers that can be found in some magic ones. was made by her daughter a talented family the chemise was part on Etsy as well it is made of thick linen and unfortunately it's a bit too large for me but I like the style 
quite close to a Victorian or Edwardian style, meaning end of the 19th, beginning of the 20th century. Finely made with ruffles on the collar and the sleeve. And the skirt is made of wool, I believe. I found it on a second-hand website. It might be 30 or 40 years old. Very classic, with some kind of dark academia vibes. And finally, there is this ascot tie. Ascot, is that the right word? around the neck, about second hand as well. I'm not sure about the fabric. Some kind of satin, I guess. Very light. Very elegant. I just love this one, definitely one of my favorites. It was made by Natalia, a costume designer from Ukraine, and her dresses are just gorgeous with the perfect fit, always flattering the shape. This one was inspired by a Da Vinci painting, La Belle Ferronnière from the end of the 15th century. As shown previously, this is a synthetic fabric that reminds of the peony silk. And the bodies and detachable sleeves are lined with white cotton. There is a golden embroidery on the collar, on black velvet, and the chemise specifically designed for this dress and made of white linen. And I found the coif in another Etsy shop, very Tudor, and the color perfectly matches. one I wanted to show you is the French teacher's dress. I bought this one in a Etsy shop owned by two Lithuanian sisters. It's entirely made of linen so very soft and it's probably inspired by 
the late 19th century American fashion. It is not really a historical costume as it's meant to be worn in everyday life. There is a zipper. But I really like the shape and it perfectly matched the style and atmosphere I wanted to create for these videos. So. There are very nice details. Lovely buttons. it. As I mentioned, there are many other costumes and seamstresses I love and I will leave links in the description if you want to see more. Thank you for watching and as always, I wish you a very good